Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we will be looking at the 8th problem from the CP31 sheet by TLE Eliminators under the 800 rated questions. Let's go. So I'll be moving on to my CP31 sheet over here. I have marked off the 800 rated parameter and I'll move on to my 8th problem, how much does Daytona cost? Let me open this up. We'll quickly read the problem. We define an integer to be the most common on a sub-segment if its number of occurrences on that subsegment is larger than the number of occurrences of any other integer in that subsegment. Okay. A subsegment of an array is a consecutive segment of elements in the array A. So we'll discuss what a subsegment means over here. And then what are they saying? They are saying, okay, given an array A and uh, that size of that array is uh, N and you have been given an integer K determine if there exists a non empty segment of subsegment of a rather where k is the most common element all right so we have uh, read the problem we can see that we have been given some uh, input in the form of t that's the number of test cases then n and k and then you have been given the array all right so what we'll do is we'll try to generalize the problem and try to understand what are they asking us so that we get a better idea of how later we can create our solution okay so we have been given an array, I'll call this array. So you have, let's say the element A0, then you have the element A1, then you have the element A2, then you have the element A3 and so on. You have till I can say I have done a zero based indexing. So A of N minus one elements. Now the total size of this array is given. It's given that I have the N sized array. And along with this, I have been given an integer K. Okay, so what is this K? We'll go into that part. But before this, they have also mentioned something as subsegment. So let's just quickly discuss this part. So subsegment ideally is simply a sub array, right? And what is the definition of sub array? Some continuous elements you take from the main array where you have removed some elements from the left and the right is called a sub array or basically a subsegment. So let's say I draw my boundary over here where I'll say, okay, I am going to take elements at this location to let's say this location. So this a1, A2, A3 together is a sub segment or a sub array. Okay. Now in a sub array, of course, there are going to be some elements. So let's say I pick up this sub array only. I'll say the sub array is A1, A2 and A3. So on. Let's say I'll pick up one more element. Let's say A4. So this is like the sub array I have extracted or sub segment rather in their meaning I have extracted out of the main array. Now in this sub segment, of course, there's going to be an element who has the maximum frequency or the maximum number of occurrences. So it can be anything. Let's say maybe uh, this A1 was two, then this A3, A2 was three. Let's say this A3 was two again. And then let's say this was one. So you know very well that over here, the maximum element, the maximum uh, frequency occurring element is actually two. So in this particular segment, the highest uh, number of occurrences, the element which has that value becomes now, this is what is given as K. So what they are simply saying is you have been given a value K. We are asking if there exists such a sub segment in this array or such a sub array in this array where K is the most common element or the element which has highest frequency. If there is, I think we have to simply print a yes. And if there is no, not that case, you don't find anything, then the answer is simply no. All right, so very, very simple problem. Let us go to the test cases and understand how is the answer coming yes and no. Let's say I'll take up the first example only. The answer, you have been given five uh, sized array the, and K is given four to us. So let's just quickly discuss this case. You have five and four and what's the array? The array is one, four, three, one, four, three, four and one. So I can very visibly see if I, let's say, extract a sub array that looks like this or sub segment that looks like this. That's four, three, and four. In this, the most common element is four. And since K was given four to me, this was K's value and this was N's value. Since K was given four to me, my answer would by simple blind yes. I know I was able to find a segment that contained four as the most common element. Okay. On that same logic, they have built up yes and no otherwise. So we'll of course discuss how are we coming to that final approach. 
before we actually go further beyond this let's just quickly discuss the input and also get into our head what would be the expected time complexity out of me so that when i create a solution i know what's my upper boundary where is the maximum limit i want to go okay so now let's just boil down very simple facts that i know for sure i know that in one second i have been allowed 10 power 8 elementary operations this is for short that i know now it has been given that you have been given time limit per test as one second so if i say in one second basically in one second i can run one test which means i can basically run 10 power 8 operations now in one test you have some test cases so each test consists of multiple test cases and that test cases number is t which can maximum go in 10 part 3 order that's 1000 so if i ask you how many number of operations are you allowed to do per test case then you can simply say this is going to be 10 part 8 upon 10 part 3 which gives me 10 power 5 operations that means in one test case i have been allowed 10 power 5 number of elementary operations to perform so if i build my complexity it should be built around somewhere around this factor so that i don't cross 10 power 5 if i do i know i am bound to get a tle that is not going to fetch a correct solution to me okay so what is my expected in this case now if i look at n and uh, n and k over here both are given in 100 order so n is also given approximately in 100 order and k is also given in 100 order. Just for simplicity purposes, let's just assume that your time complexity was dependent on n. So the question rises is, can you create a complexity that looks O of n cube? No. Why? Because this gives me 10 power 6. If n is 100, then n cube is 10 power 6. And this definitely crosses my boundary. Yes. So this is not feasible. Now, if this is not feasible, that means let's lower our boundary. Maybe we can go n square. Yes, n square is feasible since this is 10 power 4. I know 10 power 4 is less than 5, so feasible. What about O of n and anything below this? Let's say O of n log n. Yes, of course feasible. What about O of n square root n? Of course feasible and so on, so on, so on. Anything below this up till constant time limit seems feasible. So now in my head, I know that my upper bound is somewhere in this n square order. That means I don't want to across this n square order. Above this, I'm going to get a TLE. So I want to remain in this boundary where I can create my solution. Now, now of course, I don't want this to happen that I create an n square solution. Maybe I create some solution even better than this. But just for simplicity purpose, this tells me that expectedly, if you create a solution, don't mind going above n square. Okay, so this is my expected time complexity. All right. Now, how does this help me? This helps me to create a solution. This helps me to picture where I can start off. So now let's look at the cases once again and understand what can we observe from here. Okay, so the argument is actually, if I write down my argument quickly, the argument is if k is present in the array anywhere, in the array anywhere, anywhere, then the answer is yes. Then the answer is yes this is the argument why let's try to focus this part very very simple very very clever approach okay if let's say i have taken an array and let's say the numbers are a0 a1 a2 a3 so on till a of n minus 1 i have done a zero based indexing now in this case assume that k was occurring assume that you have been given the number k and k was occurring somewhere so just let's let's take up a simple case let's say this a2 number was actually k now, remember, you have been told that you need to take a subsegment. Have you been told what should be the length on that subsegment? No, that subsegment length can be anything. So, remember, even if I take up a single element, very, very important, I'll write this idea down. If I take even one sized subarray, That's a subsegment. That is a subsegment. So if I can take, like if I am good to go even with a one size subarray, how does this help me? Let's say you take up the subsegment that encaptures only k. So this is basically going to be a subsegment. It's only having one element, that's k. Now if I ask you in a one size subsegment, what's the most common element? 
can you i blindedly say that that single element that's occurring in that subsegment is the most common there is one subsegment of one sized array only or one sized element only that only element occurring in that subsegment should be the most common because that is having a frequency of 1 and there is no other element which is there to compete with that element having frequency 1 so very simple if i just take a segment out of here and term this as a segment that i want to take out then can this be my segment which fetches me the answer yes of course this can be the segment because this is a segment that has the element k most common now if this is clear of course the no case makes much sense if k occurs nowhere in the array then your argument fails directly because if there is no presence of k how will you take a sub array which has k in it initially there was no k to begin with so if the k is not present anywhere in the array then the answer becomes no and if k is present anywhere in the array then that k itself can be taken up as a segment and it simply becomes my answer so this is a very very clever observation we had to do here and this simply drops a problem to a very small piece of code and very small idea i hope this clears okay so what we'll do is quickly look at the code part to inculcate what process should we follow so that we are able to depict our idea we have n n k we have t first of all as input then i have n n k and i have taken the input of the array so up till here all i am doing is taking input this is basically taking input and then what i am doing is very simple i have a simple check over here whether number is present or not it's initially zero so you can just simply say it's kind of a boolean or anything right maybe i could have taken this with boolean false and true just a flag of zero and one also makes sense you can use any implementation i just simply run a loop in the array and if i see the number ai is k then i simply mark my number as present to be one and i break from my loop and now simple check if that number is present good to go just take that single element as a subsegment i will have my answer as yes so i'll print a yes else i print a no because that means if k was not even present in the array itself how will i extract a subarray or how will i extract a subsegment not possible okay so very very simple question now let's talk about the time complexity of course this is the loop that takes the input runs in o of n size and this also runs in o of n uh, so not sorry size order and i don't think i have any other complexity coming from this uh, code so i can write my time complexity simply as o of n and what about space complexity i am using some extra space i am using that space to actually take the input into consideration so if i do bother about that part i have an array of size n i think i don't have any other data structure as of such i only have constant variables so i can simply say space is also o of n now of course o of n is a very good time complexity to follow because we discussed that we are going till n square of course we are in o of n right now so o of n gives me somewhere simply in o of 100 order and o of 100 order of course works it's less than 10 par 5 as we discussed so going to get me an accepted solution passes of course the test cases you can see sample cases are passing it will definitely fetch you an ac on the platform also all right so a very very fun and a clever problem sort of a, a idea right just had to realize that okay if k is simply present i would be good to go and if it's not i would be uh totally in the no condition and if that is very very uh, clearly observable you can just simply boil down any small code just to figure out whether k is present and that should fetch you a accepted solution all right so i hope you like the problem thank you for watching